Hey everyone, um, I've looked around the internet a little bit and there doesn't seem to be a concise video on how to uh, first pocket your live take of drums um, and then second extract the groove that you have in that uh, drum section that you've just pocketed and then from there you can use Beat Detective in Pro Tools to actually uh, apply the same groove over a repeating part of that uh, section. So we'll go through the whole process here today. Um, it might take a little while, but we'll show you. So part one, here's the uh, live drums that I have that I'm going to be working with today. So pretty tight. Um, obviously, um, if you want a pure live drum sound, there's no need to pocket them and make them perfect, but um, I'm going to go halfway in between, so I'll show you what that process looks like. So first thing you got to do is you got to find the section that you want to work with. So we will be working with our first loop here, which is going to be... So that'll be our loop from here to here. So we'll go ahead and break that using our B key. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to manually pocket these drums. And the way that I like to do this is um, sort of complex, but I think it works the best. Um, it's also hella labor intensive, but um, I think the outcome is more than worth it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is do breaks on all the hits that I think are important. So make sure to set uh, tab to transient so you can tab through and get to your transients. And then I'm going to use B for break on our transients that are important, which in this case, we're going to do pretty much everything. Because um, again, we're not going to be moving each individual hit all that much, but we are going to need to capture the essence of the groove um, in this part itself. So let's go ahead and do a couple more. So that should be a nice block that'll function as our groove template here. And we can listen back to that. Three, four. So we'll be working with this much tape. And actually, I need to cut a couple more. So this should be our loop. So one, two, three, four, here's our loop. Cool, sounds pretty good. So what we need to do, first off, obviously, uh, you need to group your uh, drums together. So if you haven't done that already, that's pretty damn important to do. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to manually correct these drums. So the way I like to correct is down to the equivalent of one 256th notes um, in either direction from what's natural. And that sounds ridiculously uh, accurate, but it's not actually all that fine. There's still a lot of play there. So the logic here is I'm gonna move every drum hit that needs it. It's not already within uh, that range. And the way I keep that range in mind is that's about the length of uh, a full fundamental on a kick drum. So that's both sides of the uh, waveform. That's about a one, two, fifty-six. So that's about how tight I want to keep it. And there's a little bit, we can do a little bit of play there. It's not 100% necessary to do that. So I'm literally going to go through and move each hit into that tolerance. So the process, go through, move your note. The next one is the same thing. So make sure to find where your attack actually takes place. And again, fundamental. About one two fifty sixth note here. And the most important thing about this is to stay on the same side of the 100% uh, accurate note here. You don't want to, if a note is early, you don't want to make it late because that is where the groove actually lies on this part. So everything's a little early. So more or less at this point, I'm just correcting um, for that groove here. 
Um, but who knows, we might stumble into a late note later on. So again, staying early. Everything has been early thus far. Uh, you can also turn off tab, tab to transient here. Um, sometimes it makes it a little bit easier to go ahead and turn that off. So again, we'll move it within our tolerance. Crossfade. And then if you have tan, tab to transient turned off, you can just tab and it'll take you to the next cut, which is kind of nice. As you see, this one uh, falls within the tolerance. So we're within a 1256 note, so I'm not going to touch it. Same with this one. This is also in the tolerance. Looks good. Now this one is way early, so I'm going to move this. Uh, again, about the width of a bass drum fundamental is what you're looking for. Some Pro Tools lovely, everybody. Um, so we'll keep doing that. We've got this one is also early. Got our Tom hit. We'll line that up. About one two fifty sixth, and I'm going to continue to do this until the end. Okay, so we're back. Um, I went through and edited everything, and again, um, if it was early, I let it still be early. I just moved it into a tolerance. If it was late, I moved it to the late tolerance, and if it was right on, um, I didn't do anything. Um, and same goes for if it's within the tolerance, um, but not exactly on. Uh, I just leave it right there. So here's our new loop uh, as it's been pocketed. Cool. It sounds really good, really uh, perfect, but what's great about it is it doesn't feel or sound robotic, which is what we're going for. So... The next step in this process, now that we've got our, our groove picked out, as you can see, in this song, there is a lot of this still coming. It kind of just keeps going. Now, not every song is going to be this simple, and you can go through and do this with uh, sections that just have similar feel. Uh, the only thing is you're going to only want to create a groove out of the kick and snare, um, if anything else is changing there. Since this is a straight repeat, I can use this groove to apply it to the rest of my track entirely. So um, I'm going to do it based on one of the overheads just because that will give me the most uh, access to the toms and the kick and snare frequencies so I can go through and uh, grab my groove from here. So the first step in uh, grabbing our groove is we have to pick our section out itself. So first off, let's get this lined up, and then I'm going to deselect my drum group and just select my overs here. So then we'll go to the end of our groove and make sure we have it all selected. So boom, we have our groove selected just on the overheads. Next thing we're going to do is open up Beat Detective, and then we're going to do Groove Template Extraction. So we're going to capture our selection here. We've got our selection captured and um, we're going to do 16th note resolution. That really depends on how you have the click set, but we'll do 16th note here and I'm going to analyze this. And if we turn up our sensitivity, we're going to start getting our notes and then we're going to want to zoom in and make sure we are indeed capturing everything. So let's zoom in and see what we've got. Looks like we don't have the initial hit, so we're going to want to grab that. And uh, you can do that. So I'm going to go through and make sure that all our hits are uh, grabbed here. So we got our fundamental. If we're missing one, we can always throw in a new uh, note. Just click on the bottom half. We're grabbed here. We don't have this note. We're going to need that. We're going to need that. Uh, this one needs to move slightly. Grab our next kick hit. And I'm going to keep going through and make sure that I've got everything in our groove selected here. Cool. So we've got all our hits selected. So we have our groove. Our groove is captured. This is our groove. And as you can see, some hits are late. 
um, and some hits are early, and that's where our groove actually lies. So now that we've got it, I'm gonna extract this. I'm gonna save it to disk, and I'm gonna give it a name that I can recognize, which is, so this is just our little ending groove. So we've got our quantized groove here. Cool, deselect that. And since this is already set up and sounds great, I'm not gonna to touch this. I'm gonna leave that the way it was. So the next thing we're gonna do is go through, make sure that we've got our uh, next section picked out and make sure that you're selecting it in the same multiple. So I have four here. We can do more than four. Uh, we just have to be uh, careful that we select multiples of it. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. So we'll do all of this section at once. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open Beat Detective back up. And we're going to do a clip separation, capture selection, uh, analyze. And then we're going to do the same thing we did before, where we go in and make sure that we have a high enough resolution that we've grabbed all the hits that we want. And if we are missing anything, like we can be from time to time. Um, and actually this whole section is jacked up. So sometimes you gotta make. Okay, so I've gone through and I made sure that all our groove hits have been selected. And looks like I missed a couple, but that's all right. Uh, as long as we get the vast majority of them, um, our groove is probably gonna line up the way that we would like. So we've got our section. Important thing, make sure that you have the ends uh, exactly at the start and end of where you need them. So now that we've got it selected here, I'm gonna reselect my group, hold shift, and then press the um, semicolon key, and that's gonna select everything in my drum group. Since I just selected drums here, and I'm gonna go through and separate all of this. So there's our cut. Now I'm going to go to click conform. And as opposed to a standard, I'm gonna grab my save template that we've worked with, which is SAT ending. Now that we've got it set, we can go through and we can click conform. I like to uh, zoom out and watch a little bit just to make sure it doesn't mess everything up because sometimes things do get wacky. So I'll go ahead and conform. Looked really solid to me. Go to edit smoothing, I go fill and crossfade. I do two milliseconds. I don't know, it's preference I suppose. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click smooth and we've now applied our groove template to this entire section without having to manually go in and pocket it. So let's take a listen. There's some artifacts left over, but aside from the artifacts, um, the rhythm and groove job is actually really good. And as you can see, it changes a little bit halfway through, but because we didn't uh, select those transients on our groove detection itself, um, that it just lined up. And since, you know, odds are most of the hits are fairly right on, it doesn't affect our groove and we keep it where we need it. So the last thing that we have to do is uh, clean up the mess that uh, Beat Detective made. So from here, I uh, switch over to slip, and we're gonna go ahead and just do a manual crossfade here, turn back on tab to transient, and now we can tab through and see what's going on. So basically what I'm looking for here, uh, if we expand this a little bit, is I'm looking for uh, artifacts in the crossovers themselves. So that one looks pretty good, that one looks good. This one, it's kind of messy, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it back to a better spot, cool. And it's just a matter of going through and doing all this. And uh, I literally just tabbed through and told them to the end of the section. So I'm gonna go through and do that. And uh, I will check back at the end. All right, so we're back. Um, 
as you can see, I took out a huge chunk of that when you consider we only actually manually edited about this little section here. Um, so I'm almost done with this whole section. Um, and it probably looks kind of tedious, but it is. Uh, I sort of feel like it's the only way to capture both a live drum feel because I'm not copying and pasting while um, still getting the consistency and rhythm that really makes a song groove hard. So if we take a listen, let me just clean up these initial hits here and uh, let's take a listen to the whole section. So we're very close. There's a couple of hits there um, that we're probably going to need to go in. And uh, they're usually pretty easy to spot. But uh, if you just go through, we can see right here that was pretty quick to find. Um, and we can still continue to adjust the way that we would manually. But Pro Tools has gone ahead and done so much of the work for us um, without having to really uh, do a whole lot. So that's uh, editing for the pockets in Pro Tools and then using Beat Detective to apply that pocket elsewhere. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hope it works out well for you.